because there are interesting quirks. You know, you know Nietzsche with his, if you gaze long into the abyss, the abyss gazes into you. Um, how has this theories, these ideas change you as a person? It's been very, very difficult. The stuff is not just abstract theory building because it's, it's about us. Sometimes I've realized that there's this big division. I mean, my, my mind is doing all this science and, and coming up with these conclusions, and the rest of me is not integrating. It's just like, I don't believe it. I just don't believe this. I mean, it's, it seems. So as I start to take it seriously, it's get, I, I get scared myself. It's like, is it? but it's very much, then I read these spiritual traditions and realize they're saying very, very similar things. It's like, th there is a lot of convergence. So for me, I have... The first time I thought it might be possible that we're not seeing the truth was in 1986. It was from some mathematics we were doing. And when that hit me, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I had to sit down. It was, it, it really, it was scary. It was really a, a shock to the system. And then to realize that everything that has been important to me, like, you know, getting a house, getting a car, getting a reputation, and so forth. Well, that car is just like the car I see in the virtual reality. It's just there when you perceive it and it's not there. So the whole question of, you know, what am I doing and why? What, what's, what's worthwhile doing in life? Clearly, getting a big house and getting a big car. I mean, we all knew that we were gonna die. So we we, all, we we tend not to know that. We tend to hide it, especially when we're young. Before age 30, we don't believe we're going to die. But yeah, we factually maybe know that you you kind of are supposed to, yeah. But but they'll figure something out, and, and yeah. we'll be the generation that is the first one that doesn't have to die. Yeah. We, that, that's the kind of thing. But But when you really face the fact that you're going to die, and then when, you, when I start to look at it from this point of view, that, well, this thing was an interface to begin with. So what I'm really, is what I'm really going to be doing just taking off a headset. So I've been a, playing in a virtual reality game all day and I, I got lost in the game when I was fighting over a Porsche and I, I, I shot some guys up and I punctured their tires and I got the Porsche. Now I take the headset off and what was that for? Nothing. It was just, it was a data structure and the data structure is gone. So, so all of the wars, the fighting and the, the reputations and all this stuff, you know, where it's just a headset. <laughs> so now, and, and in, so my theory says that intellectually, my my mind, my my emotions, rebel all over the place. It's, it's like I, you know, and so so I have to meditate. I meditate a lot. <laughs> what percent of the day would you say you spend as a physicalist, um, sort of living life, pretending your car matters? Your reputation matter, like, uh, like how much uh, was that Tom Waits song? I like my town with a little drop of poison. How much poison do you allow yourself to have? I think my default mode is physicalist. Right. I think that that's just the default. I, I, when I'm not being conscious, yeah, consciously attentive, then... intellectually consciously attentive. Because if you're just, you're still, if you're tasting coffee and not thinking. Or, t or drinking, or just taking in the sunset. You're not being intellectual, you're, but you're still experiencing it. Right. So it's when you turn on the, the like the introspective machine, that's when you can start and, and turn off the thinker. When I actually just start looking without thinking, huh. so that's that's when I feel like I all of a sudden I'm starting to see through. <laughs> sort of like okay, part of part of the addiction to the interface is all the stories I'm telling about it. It's really important for me to get that, really important to, to yeah. do that. All, so I'm telling all these stories, and it, so I'm all wrapped up. All, all, almost all of the mind stuff that's going on in my head is about attachment to the interface. And so what I found is that the essentially the only way to really detach from the interface is to literally let go of thoughts altogether. And then all of a sudden, um, even my identity, uh, you know, my whole history, my name, my education, and all this stuff is, is almost irrelevant because it's just now here is 
the present moment. And this is this is the reality right now. And all of that other stuff is an interface story. But this conscious experience right now, this is the only, this is the only reality as far as I can tell. The rest of it's a story. And but that is again not my default. That is, I have to make a really conscious choice to say, okay, I know intellectually this is all an interface. I, I'm going to take the headset off and so forth, and 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 then immediately sink back into the game and just be out there playing the game and and get lost in. It. So I'm always lost in the game unless I literally consciously choose to stop thinking. Isn't it terrifying yeah. to acknowledge that to look beyond the game? Isn't it uh... scares the hell out of me? It, it, it really is scary because I'm so attached. I'm attached to this body. I'm attached I, to the interface. Are you ever worried about breaking your brain a bit? Meaning like, it's, uh, I mean, some of these ideas, when you think about reality, even with like Einstein, just realizing, you said interface, just realizing that light you know, that there's a speed of light and you can't go fast in the speed of light and like what kind of things black holes and can do with light, even that can mess with your head. Yes. But that's still space-time. That's a big mess, but it's still just space-time. It's still a property of our interface. That's right. But, you, but it's still like even, uh, so, th 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 even Einstein realized that this particular thing, some of the stories we tell ourselves is constructing interfaces that are oversimplifying the, the way things work. Um, because the it's nice, the stories are nice. Stories are nice, this I mean, just like video games, they're nice. Right, and, but Einstein was a realist, right? He was a famous realist in the, in the sense that he, he was very explicit in a 1935 paper with um, Podolsky and Rosen, the, the EPR paper, where he, 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 they said, if without in any way disturbing a system, I can predict with probability one, the outcome of a measurement. Then there exists in reality that element, right? That, that, that value. That, and we now know from quantum theory that, that that's false. That Einstein's idea of local realism is, is strictly speaking false. Yeah. And, and so we can predict, we can set up, in quantum theory, you can set up and there's a, there's a paper by Chris Fuchs, uh, Quantum Bayesianism, where he, he scouts this out. It was done by other people, but he gives a good presentation of this, where they have a sequence of like, something like nine different quantum measurements that, that you can make. And you can predict with probability one what a particular outcome will be, but you can actually prove that it's impossible that the value existed before you made the measurement. So you know with probability one what you're going to get, but you also know with certainty that that value was not there until you made the, the measurement. So, the, so we know from quantum theory that the act of observation is an act of fact creation. Hmm. And that is built into what I'm saying with this theory of consciousness. If consciousness is fundamental, space-time itself is an act of fact creation. It's, it's an interface that we create, consciousness creates, plus all the objects in it. So local realism is not true. Quantum theory is, is, is established that. Also, non-contextual realism is not true. And that that it fits in perfectly with this idea that consciousness is fundamental. These things are these exist as data structures when we create them. As 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 Chris Fuchs says, the act of observation is an act of fact creation. But I, I must say, on a personal level, I'm having to spend I spend a couple hours a day just sitting in meditation on this and facing the rebellion in me that goes to the core, it feels like it goes to the core of my being, rebelling against these ideas. So, so here, it's very, very interesting for me to look at this because, so here I'm a, I'm a scientist and I'm a person. The, the science is really clear. Local realism is false. Non-contextual realism is false. Space-time is doomed. It's, it's very, very clear. It, it, it couldn't be clearer. And my, re my emotions rebel left and right. When I sit there and say, okay, I am not something in space and time. The, the, something inside of me says, 
you're crazy. Of course you are. And I'm completely attached to it. I'm completely attached to all this stuff. I'm, I'm attached to my body. I'm attached to the headset. I'm attached to my car, attached to people. I'm attached to all of it. And, and yet I know as an absolute fact, I'm going to walk away from all of it. I'm going to die. It'll, you know, it, 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 in fact, I almost died last year. I, COVID almost killed me. It, it, I, I, I sent a goodbye text to my wife. So I was, I, w I thought I was You done. really did. I sent her a goodbye. I, I, I was in the emergency room and uh, it had attacked my heart and it had been at 190 beats per minute for 36 hours. I, I couldn't last much longer. I knew I, I, they couldn't stop it. So, so that, that was, that was it. So that was it. So, so I texted her goodbye from the emergency room. I and, love you. Goodbye. Kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was it. So, so were you afraid? Yeah. It scares the hell out of you. Right. But there, there is, there was, you're just feeling so bad anyway, that, that all, you know, you, that, that sort of, you're scared, but you're just feeling so bad that in some sense you just want it to stop anyway. So, so I've, I've, I've been there and faced it just, just a year ago. How did that change you, by the way? Having, having this intellectual reality that's so challenging that you meditate on, that you're, it's just an interface. And one of the, one of the hardest things to come to terms with is that that means that, you know, it's going to end. Um, how did that change you having come, come so close to the reality of it? It's not just an intellectual reality. It's, it's a reality of death. It's it's forced. I've I've meditated for twenty years now, and, and I would say averaging three or four hours a day. Um, but it's put a new urgency. But it's, it, it, urgency is not the right word because that that it's it it's riveted my attention. I'll put it that way. It's really riveted my attention, and um, I've really paid. I spent a lot more time looking at what spiritual traditions say. I don't, by the way, again, not taking it with a, you know, take it all with a grain of salt. But on the other hand, I think it's stupid for me to ignore it. So I try to listen to the best ideas and, and to sort out nonsense from, and it's just, it's, we all have to do it for ourselves, right? It's, it's not easy. So what makes sense, and I have the advantage of some science, so I can look at what science says and try to compare with spiritual tradition. I try to sort it out for myself. And, but then I also look and realize that there's another aspect to me, which is this whole emotional aspect. The, I'm, I, I seem to be wired up as evolutionary psychology says I'm wired up, right? All these defensive mechanisms, you know, I'm, I'm inclined to lie if I need to. I'm inclined to to be angry, to protect myself, to have an in-group and an out-group, to try to you know, make my reputation as big as possible, to try to demean the out-group. There's all these things that evolutionary psychology it is, is spot on. It's, it's really brilliant about the human condition. And yet I think evolution, as I said, evolutionary theory is a projection of a deeper theory where there may be no competition. So how, so I'm in this very interesting position where I feel like, okay, according to my own theory, I'm consciousness. And maybe this is what it means for consciousness to wake up. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's almost like I, have, I feel like I have real skin in the game. It really is scary. I, I really was scared when I was about to die. It, it really was hard to say goodbye to my wife. It really, it really pained. And to then look at that and then look at the fact that I'm gonna walk away from this anyway and it's just an interface. How do I, so it's it's trying to put all this stuff together and really grok it, so to speak, not just intellectually, but grok it at an emotional yeah, level. Yeah, what are you afraid of, you silly evolved organism that's gotten way too attached to the interface? <laughs> that, <laughs> what are you really afraid of? That, that's right. <sighs> Is there a- it's Very personal, you know, it's very, very personal. Yeah. 